The new to me MCOM 3 portable has long been in the arsenal of Chameleon. This is a broad banded portable antenna that has a matching unit to which you would attach a 73 foot radiating wire as well as a counterpoise. This particular antenna can be used in a multiple of configurations with the matching unit up high, the matching unit down low. This can be installed as an inverted L. It can be an inverted V. So for me, I like an antenna that has a lot of versatility, an antenna that can be used in a number of different ways and configurations. So this is primarily a portable antenna. And I'm going to set it up in the Homeowners Association here where I live in Tampa Bay, Florida, just because before I take this portable, I want to test it out a little bit and I want to do something a little bit unique with it here where I live. Now, I'm going to use the inverted V configuration, but with a bit of a variation. Because I live in a home that's on a small lot, I'm going to say, I don't know, quarter acre to one third acre. That's not unusual in a city, uh, an area like Tampa Bay, which has been developed for double digit years. My home alone is 40 years old. So when you look at my community, you might see what appears to be an older, outdated community. Well, Tampa Bay is littered with these types of communities. It's all developed, all built out, and has been for many, many years. So this is what you have if you choose to live in the Tampa Bay area. Of course, not exclusively. There are a few scattered newer subdivisions, but mine would be typical. So what am I going to do that's different? Well, to go in an inverted V would require enough space to get this 73 foot radiating wire extended from one end of the backside of my property to another. You might have recently seen me do this with the LEFS 8010, where I had to get really creative with the configuration to get it spread out far enough to be able to, to use it. And it was a successful deployment. So here's what I'm going to do. You know, when we think about an inverted V, you know, we think up down. So my radiator is going to be in an upside down V. I'm going to have my matching unit on one side. The radiating element is going to go up to my portamast and then back down to the other side, thus inverted V. Well, I'm going to have to do a sloping <laughs> inverted V because I'm going to attach this to my home. I'm going to attach this in such a way that it becomes stealth. Now, this wasn't really designed um, particularly for stealth deployment in an HOA environment, but you always need to be thinking if you do live in an environment like I do by my choice, how do you take something that is readily available in the market and adapt it to your particular needs? So I'm going to install this on the inside of a windowsill so it just disappears. And the first thing I need to do is make a modification to the winder on the MCOM 3. I need to drill two holes in that winder, kind of in the middle on the top and the bottom, so I can screw it into the wall. Here I'm just using the winder itself as a template for those first two holes that I drilled in the winder, and then I'm going to put tap cons into the concrete block stucco wall. This winder does have a strain relief on it, and I've used that while I've attached the wire using a wing nut on both sides. One side for the radiator and the other side for the counterpoise or ground radio. I'm just letting that radio hang down um, from the window and then draping it across my concrete porch. I did recently take my portamast and I put this ring connected to a 3 8 by 24 stud on the very top of the topper of the portamast. So my wire is going to be about 21 feet in the air. I'm grabbing this polymer ring on the end of the 73 foot wire and I'm moving it to the center or close to the center of the 73 foot wire and then I'm clipping it on to this ring that I put on the top of my portamast. And yes the portamast does come up this easily. It also goes down this easily. It is not a friction fit. It is a positive locking system. And now you can begin to get the idea of what I meant by a sloping inverted V. I'm going to go ahead and grab my wire now. I'm going to walk towards the end of the 73 foot wire and figure out where I want to drill a hole in this concrete block stucco wall for me to put some shock cord to keep some tension on the wire.
I used a Tapcon concrete screw and a couple of washers to attach a loop of the shock cord to the house. And now I put the shock cord through the loop, the ring, the Delrin ring that's on the end of the 73 foot wire. I'll probably do something a little bit nicer here in the future because I'm all of a sudden thinking this might be the new station reference antenna because I'm really liking how I've been able to go from a 30 foot wire to a 73 foot wire. That's pretty significant here on a very small lot in the HOA where my portamast is a flagpole disguised. I get to fly the American flag. I get to fly a 73 foot wire that disappears into the sky. I think I'm going to like this. I'm going to take the birds singing as their approval of my work. Here is the matching unit inset in the opening of my window in the concrete block stucco wall. And here is the other end of the 73 foot wire. Now you understand sloping inverted V. I've mentioned to you a number of times the amount of value that you can find in the Chameleon Antenna Operator's Manual. But to be honest with you, I have searched and searched in this manual and nowhere can I find this sloping inverted V configuration. I see everything but the sloping inverted V configuration. And I do want to address that right now. You should always be installing antennas according to the manufacturer's recommendations and specifications. They've designed the antennas to work in a certain way. For me, I don't have this antenna in free space. That would be its best operating condition. It would be best operated in an inverted L, inverted V, uh, sloping with the matching unit high, the matching unit low. You can actually float this wire um, at a level plane and get some envis out of it. But a sloping inverted V, nowhere is this mentioned. Don't be cavalier or reckless with your antennas. I always recommend to install the best antenna you can afford, whether you homebrew it or you buy it already commercially available. Put the antenna up in the way that it is recommended by the manufacturer or by the science in which and by which that antenna was created. If you can't do that, don't go running like a frightened child and say, I can't operate because I don't have enough space. Get creative and try what I've done. And then answer the question, can I make contacts? That's correct, seven, it's right, seven, Sierra, five, one, Denmark, X-ray, key one, seven. Kilo, Delta, four, Bravo, Mike, Golf. Kilo, Delta, four, Bravo, Mike, Golf, thank you, Bob. Five, nine, two, you, I'm Giannis, okay? Hey, Giannis, five, nine, Tampa, Florida. Seventy three, have a blast, friend. Thank you. Any more? Let's connect to the AA two thousand zoom and see if my non standard configuration, not in free space, radial wire running across the concrete slab impacted SWR. Let's throw it up on the Jumbotron for those struggling to read the tiny screen. We're 1.5 SWR on 160, 2 to 3 on 80, 3 on 60, 2.7 on 40, and then for 30, 20, 17, 15, 12, 10, and 6, we're 1.5 to 2. So SWR is in pretty good shape for a broad banded antenna that brings us resonance through a matching unit. Let's go ahead and run some of our whisper tests and then we'll jump on over to FT8. This whisper map is representative of other stations hearing my weak signal and reporting that back. My Zactech transmitter will do all bands continuously by jumping from band to band to band with the exception of 160 and 6 meter. So this represents all bands. There is this one anomaly with one signal being reported going straight north to the North Pole. This shows up on a couple of maps. I've seen this frequently. I have no clue what it represents. I'm going to roll through band by band by band so you can see how the propagation is working from this antenna. I was a little concerned about directionality and I don't think I have directionality. What I see is an antenna that's working as good as and actually better than I anticipated giving the interesting configuration in which I installed it. The only band that's a little bit shy on reporting stations was 10 meters and that's because I had to take down the antenna today before I went off to work because there was a massive storm coming through and I couldn't leave the antenna up. I chose not to leave the antenna up during a time when this type of a storm situation was happening. So I missed the prime time 10 meter uh, operating condition for those reports back to me. 
One of the benefits of the MCOM3 Portable is right there in its name, its size. It's sized for portability. It's rated at 100 watts single sideband, 50 watt CW, and 25 watts for those high duty cycle digital modes like FT8. That didn't stop me from just having great success here on FT8 on 20 meters. Within 15 minutes, I had made all the contacts I needed to prove that this antenna in my configuration was effective. I jumped on over to 40 meters and basically found the same type of operating condition. I can easily make contacts on 40 meters FT8 using this antenna system. The MCOM3 portable broadbanded antenna, perfect to throw in the backpack for your next deployment on the go, or to put it up in an unusual configuration to make it stealth here in the HOA. Hope you found this useful friend. Talk to you soon. 73.